to everyone. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Wow, okay. Instant host with Seth. <laughs> Ten viewers already. She might have you on auto host. I'm sure she was streaming herself. No, she's finished already, but damn. I don't know, maybe she does. Know, maybe That's she does. still impressive. I've got way too many people on auto host. I need to organize it properly. <laughs> like I just I just host when I'm online and say, Oh, they're they're, they're streaming, I'll host them. <laughs> oh, do you mind if we do this one as a call so I can do some video stuff? Um I won't be able I haven't got it set up to stream the video. No, I mean like... I mean like, on camera. Yeah, I haven't got OBS set up for that. Oh. Okay. <laughs> We're gonna have to like, do it next week or something. Also, get your butt in your chair. We've already got people hosting us, so... Thank you as well, Razfox, for the host. Shit, they can hear me now. Like yeah, they can hear you, because guess what? Discord call. Alrighty. <laughs> Jalen with a host. Damn. Kicking off already. You're finally popular. <laughs> the hot. I mean, it, it's nice, but I wouldn't say this is popu popular status. Oh, shit. I fucked my water bottle on the other side of the room. What have you done? He's, see, dogs are just disorganized. They don't know what they're doing. Okay. There we go. You cool now? No. <laughs> I am never cool. I am not one of these cool kids, as you say. Oh, Mallard, he's starting already. <laughs> no. Shit, Mallard, give me some of those bits. You think it's just Kavuli that does all this shit? <laughs> yeah, Jero does deserve his his own set of biddies. Don't just. <laughs> I wasn't being serious, but okay. No, you do. I I generally think that you do, but <sighs> Mallard, you've already destroyed me last night. Please <laughs> cease this. Besides, we don't have any. You know what? Yeah, I thought you were talking again. I opened up the stream so I could check the chat, and now I hear you talking. I'm like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's your own dumb vault. As a, uh, anyway, as I was saying, uh, only 400 pounds. You really think it's going to be that cheap? What? What? Your um donation thing for uh, MFF. Um, it's it's a help. <laughs> It, this, I'm not saying that's the full. It, it's a help. That's all it is. Jesus Christ! Oh my God! Uh, anyway, um, yeah, I may or may not have had a hand in designing your channel intro and getting Zillion to make you a channel icon. Yes, you managed to squeak squeak that out of him. I don't know how, but you did. <laughs> because he he pumped mine out in like oh, ten minutes. Mallard, stop! <laughs> Oh my 400 god. bits, not 400 dollars. Thousand bits, a hundred bits, 400. Oh my god. Depending you know, there's something I've noticed about there's something I noticed about Mallard. What? Shut up, phone. Oh my god. There's something I noticed Please. about Ma Mallard. Um, I well, I do that all the time, even if I'm not actually angry. <laughs> um, his name is Mallard the Fox. So is he a duck and a fox? He's a duck. Oh fox. my god, phone. I don't <laughs> care. <laughs> <laughs> when the fuck was I subscribed to this bullshit? It, it's a. <laughs> oh my god! It, it, it's a f okay. So, in America, in terms of American politics, uh, funding parties are called PACs. P A C S. It's a. It's an acronym. And there is a pack called Wolf Pack, mm -hmm. which goes out of their way to fund legislation against super funding or super PACs or super funders and that kind of stuff for presidential campaigns. Right. And so um, in college, being the fucking idiot that I was thinking that I could actually influence it, um, I joined the, the Wolf Pack. But um, that was a fucking stupid idea <laughs> because they're doing absolutely dick. 
Fair enough. <laughs> anyway. So now, <laughs> so now instead of having a hernia worrying about politics, I'm having a hernia worrying about my next job and, uh, well, not my next job, my current job, potentially my next job, um, and all of that good stuff because I am currently looking for a new form of employment that might be better suited towards a career path or something like that. Yeah. I'm actually, uh, I'm applying internally as it is. Makes sense. Anyway, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, welcome to uh, the Furcast with Explosive Start. Um, we've got Mallow just raining bits down in the jar. Victini, Ryan Fox in, in the chat. How's it going? Who else we got in here? Let's bring up that list. Uh, I'll... Big shout out to that headache that I've got from smacking my head against the corner of a bookshelf. Yeah, because you're just why I take a pill idiot. for that. So we've got uh, Al Whiffer Pad, Electrical Skateboard, Jalen Fulf, Mad the Fox, Raz Fox, Ryan Fen Fox, all the foxes, <laughs> Victini HD, and of course myself and Jero. How how is it going, guys? How how has time been? It's been a, it's been a couple of weeks since we've done this. That's because. Uh, How's last... time been? How's time been? Yes. Time, time been good. Uh, couldn't do yes. last week because you know I had my other half here, and more important. <laughs> but uh, no, welcome to Furcast. Always nice to be back. So let's kick this off, shall we? So from BBC News UK. So school pencil cases banned to stop stigma. So, a school has banned pencil cases in a bid to stop pupils from poor families being stigmatised. St. Wilfred's Primary School in Blythe, Northumberland, that's not far from where I live, said it has taken steps to get rid of any designer goods. Head teacher Pauline Johnston said pencil cases have been banned, so there's no comparison on the tables and children are learning. St. Wilfred's is among more than 100 schools in a project to stop poorer pupils being stigmatised. After working with charity Children North East, the school has begun providing stationery and has cut down the number of dress-up and fundraising days. There was a culture within the school, within pupils, that noticed those children who were never on, in on PE days, for example, Miss Johnson said. Part of her uniform policy is standard backpack, so we don't have any designer goods. She said that some parents complained about having to buy certain bags, but enough time was left before the rule was fully enforced. They're probably proofing the school school day project led by Children North East encouraged students to look at ways in which some pupils might unwittingly uh, might be unwittingly excluded. School said it has led to higher attendance and better results. The charity also said dress up days or conversation about what we did at the weekend can also penalise those from low income backgrounds. It said schools can be found more discreet ways of distributing free school uniforms as parents and children were reluctant to approach them directly. So, this is basically saying that obviously when you when kids go to school, there's no like real. Oh, there's a poor kid school and a rich kid school. It's just like everybody goes to school. But you know, you will always you've always had those kids that have got like the fancy new shoes, the the new bag, the new sports gear, like st like stuff like that. And you've got the kids who are, like the families are struggling to get by, and they've got like hand me downs, and um. Yeah, I remember seeing a lot of, like, you know, poor kids getting bullied and victimized from the spoiled brats, basically, because of the clothes they were wearing, the stuff they had to come to school. So, if this has taken steps to, like, say, like, no, every kid is basically equal here, um, and it's actually showing good results... Uh, I'm all for it. I think it's a brilliant idea, to be perfectly honest. Um, whoa, whoa, hold on a second, hold on a second there. Okay, so let me go ahead and make a real-life parallel. So you're basically saying, um, in terms of, like, and, I, and I'm scaling this up on a more extreme scale, Okay. but the comparison will make sense. You're basically saying that the asshole down the street that has a shitload of money he can't buy a sports car anymore because he's reminding this person who has a beat to hell Honda Civic that he's not rich and and that kind of stuff. You're basically saying he's not allowed to buy that anymore just so this guy is able to go to work and not feel like crap. <sighs> is that is that what you're saying? No, because that, here's it's, the thing. It's, it's a fucking it's a fucking pencil case. It's their parents 
buying them shit to make them feel special. And at the end of the day, okay, yeah, so what? It's a goddamn pencil case. All right. It should be more about the kids' performance in school, know. their grades, and all of that good stuff. And having equipment that works as opposed to Jeff. having equipment that's flashy, that's the important part. No, th this is this Ooh, is the part joke. where I make a rebuttal. I, Let me make my rebuttal. I need to stop you because I get where you're coming from with the scale-up example. It's just a little slightly off. I'm not saying people can't have the flashy stuff and everything. I'm not saying that. The problem is because I was one of the kids that was like moved around a lot and didn't have the flashy stuff. I was one of them. And I got bullied and victimized because of that. So that's the reason I support it's not a case of like they can't have these nice things but in a school where you know kids are still learning and it's literally like oh look at me I've got new like new like pencil case or new nice shoes or whatever that's technically part of school uniform because it meets the standards but a kid has a brand branded thing against a kid who's literally gone to Primark and spent three quid and that's causing bullying uh no I'm sorry but in a school environment, that can cause more distraction if a kid's getting bullied. So if well, then, well, then handle the bullying. Address the bullying. Enforce the rules against bullying. It you doesn't work. You take that guy, you talk to that. It, clearly, it doesn't work because, in, from my experience personally, it doesn't matter when it comes to like boys and that kind of stuff. Teachers don't enforce these rules because they don't think it's affecting anything. They think it's some kid making a snide remark and then they don't realize, you know, two, three years down the line, that kid just turned into a school shooter. The, the thing is about it that it doesn't, the actual pencil case, that doesn't matter. That is not the cause of the problem. That is a causality for the direct symptom. Bullying is still going to happen. It's just going to take a different form. Yeah, okay, yeah, it's still and going to happen. But if they're saying that here, what they've done has actually yielded positive results, there's got to be something in that. There has to be. If it didn't have any res if it literally made no change, it wouldn't have made the news. But the fact that these this, schools have made the is... changes, so oh, every student is wearing like oh. the same uniform stuff, the no branded crap anywhere. And it's making a positive thing. There's something in that. There's gotta and be. This is where this is where I'm going to say that with any and all scientific trials, there must be a repetition of results in a different but similar environment because there may be something else to that. There may be some specific thing. I can tell you from personal experience that you know branded items and that kind of stuff isn't my my microphone yeah. it, it it isn't the issue it's oh that kid like well it would have been like 10 15 years ago oh that kid likes star trek he's a nerd make fun of him or oh this kid still plays with legos which i'm sitting here going like who the fuck says that people do that. um he's he's a geek or he's a kid um, bully him and that has nothing to do with economic status it's going to happen and in some cases if it's not with your items it's with you personally and for me per and in my opinion that hits worse that's worse than any kind of like monetary thing because you can get over money by pushing yourself harder than everybody else making yourself more noticed and everything and, and in some cases it can be encouragement to want to go out and get a job earlier in your childhood you know just like go out to a fast food mart and get a job there in high school um and, and that kind of stuff wait it can, it sorry can I need to interrupt there straight away that's right right is a small issue right there in the uk you can't really do that you in when you're in when you're in high school like when you're aged between like freaking 13 like to 16 or 18 um, getting a part-time job is not a thing you can do. Like, if you want a job, like, after school, the earliest you can leave is probably 16 and then go into an apprenticeship. Or if you are lucky, you will get a job, but you'll be paid the absolute lowest minimum wage. It, so there's some cultural differences between there. It's not as easy in the UK to go, oh, well, so this, I'll just leave school, go get a job and make a better life. 
and oh was... no 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 i never said leave school there were a lot of kids in my school that decided they're going to get a job and do high school at the same time um there was a kid i knew tristan um and throughout from his sophomore year he got a job at the chick-fil-a that was like 10 uh 10 minutes away mm. and so every day after school if we didn't have band practice he would go there so he did that and on top of that he was in one win ensemble he was in marching band he was in show choir he was in combo choir he did all of this stuff somehow made it work and didn't quit until he graduated and of course he had to move and all that good stuff and he made quite a bit of money the time management is completely possible and don't tell me it isn't because oh, I'm I'm this not guy saying it isn't. I would say it isn't. I'm just saying there is a small like difference between like the UK and the US there because I don't know anybody who's had a job in like high school had a job while they're in high school. I just don't. I've known people that have finished at the age of sixteen and left school before the last two years and then gone to like an apprenticeship or college or straight into a job. Uh, that's the only like difference. And I get what you're saying about this, there will still be bullying because, oh, he plays with Lego, or, or he's a nerd. Yeah, that's something hard to tackle. But, again, I have experienced the bullying due to, literally, economic status. And I have seen it in other people as well. So it is a thing. And if this change is at least eliminating that, it's one less thing that people can be picked on for. That's all I'm saying. I mean, if... Well, if if something comes up in the future where it's not the underlying issue fair enough but right now that's what's being shown and for me I think it's a great thing if that's the case then then don't punish everybody that has a brand preference if some kid is like taking the piss out of someone because they have like a lower quality pencil case or something like that then the teacher should just go out and confiscate that kid's pencil case and they should just have that as kind of a rule in there where if you can't show appreciation for your stuff and um you know respect the fact that others can't have as nice things you don't deserve to have that don't go out of your way to like you know decide that everybody should should have the exact same things because one asshole can't appreciate something yeah, okay. I see where you're coming from that point. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, but... it's very it's very similar to my thoughts on the whole gun control issue, which I'm not going to get hip deep into. I'm not going to explain my Tell thoughts on just it. just not? We've All done I'm that gonna... before. <laughs> All I'm going to say is I'm right in the middle on that conversation where I think there's regulation needed, but, you know, don't punish gun enthusiasts that don't shoot people. Yeah, but again, this is obviously like, government backing and stuff like well not government backing but it's charity funding it's part of like a, a council area so rather than deal with individual people which is technically more work they've just done a blanket issue oh jesus christ a big message from Jalen. so he too was victimized in high school not because he didn't have the flashy stuff but because he was different from everyone else um he led to uh, reach my breaking point and bully spreading rumor i become a school shooter only the whole chaos set within days of reporting the issue, but contribute to his depression, but glad the fandom has helped me lift my spirits. Fandom's helped me lift that my spirits as well. Exact, that exact same thing happened to me. The difference is, instead of within days and it getting settled, it was over the course of years, and it never stopped. Mm. Like, th there is... There is nothing that really gave me any sort of solace except for coming home doing my homework and then just playing video games yeah ultimately my life like became online until i got to college and even then i still couldn't fucking trust people yeah I, again like similar to me it was like video games was my, was my crutch with everything um and then obviously when i left school went to college it took me a while to open up found the fandom that just started giving me a huge confidence boost uh, and it just, I, I just flew from there basically, but yeah, uh, I just if changes. I mean, this is the start. I mean, I hope, hope it might be the start of looking at different ways to like tackle bullying. I would like to s see this be a thing, like so bad. But again, Honestly, I don't know what it'll be like in America because, like I said, there are some cultural differences. 
here's here's the thing it's strange in america because you know there, there is this very odd circumstance of don't punish the bully punish the victim for lashing back which i it, never so, understand it's so fucked like if someone constantly calls you a loser yes you should punch them in the face that's what i honestly think um you should it be like you know that asshole at work that takes jabs at everybody should you punch him in the face uh, no he deserves something worse <laughs> yeah, <just kidding. laughs> no but, but no. It, it's like it, it's like the difference is there's harassment there's aggravated assault there's specific there is specifically eliciting a reaction out of somebody and that kind of thing it, it specifically trying to goat someone into punching you or into taking some sort of violent action mm. and making you feel like you have no other choice that is illegal that yeah. will actually um get charges dismissed because you know we've seen it happen with buzz aldrin yeah. but in american materialism ultimately in my experience materialism ultimately was not the thing it was just you're not doing the thing all the cool kids are or you look strange or x y and z and blah 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 blah. there was like a specific norm to be had and if you couldn't afford it then and at the very least you were just like acting like a cool kid and that kind of stuff then people would pretty much just glance right past you or if you just did absolutely nothing if you didn't try to stand out and then um you would just blend right in yeah I mean... but even then it, it's like Again, that is over here in the so UK as well, stupid. but I'm just saying the economy thing is also part of the bullying awareness. That's all I'm saying. And literally just going to wrap up this topic of, like, if you, even, like, after, like, school and stuff, if you do feel like, you know, you are being, like, bullied, harassed, or looked down, or what, whatever, trust me, there is someone you can go to talk to. And I don't mean, like, a therapist or stuff like that. I was like, you do have friends, especially in the fandom. Like I've lost count of how many. I didn't. <laughs> well, I'm saying I'm like like now, like I lost count of how many times like some people said, "Look, can I just t like in the group chat, is there somebody I could just quickly talk to?" And if I'm there, I'm I'm pretty much one of the first people to go, "Yo, what's up?" You know, because some just having someone to vent to is enough. So yeah, it sucks, but like it happens, but. Someone's always got your back. So, as, that's well, my final say on that. A more lighthearted but still somewhat serious topic. Belgian Gaming Commission details what it what loot eh, wow, good lord. Speak. Belgian Gaming de Gaming Commission details what loot boxes it considers gambling. I I I'm sorry. I fucking hate the way that news articles are titled because in some cases it like even if the mannerisms of taking out as many words as possible to cram that shit onto one line is there, they also do it to the point where it's like, oh, we're still following the language rules that we set for ourselves, <laughs> and make it, and they make it fucking clickbait. Yeah, I'm just sitting here, you're going like, use proper English, and don't leave out any details. I don't care if the title is two hours long. Yeah. Anyway. Um, with the recent release of the Belgian Gaming Commission's research on video game loot boxes comes the clear definition of what is considered gambling and what's fair game under Belgian law. Top, top offenders accused of violating these standards, EA, Valve, Activision Blizzard, <laughs> tech, the same company, may soon face criminal prosecution. Loot boxes are just one of the many methods of monetizing video games in recent years. Players can purchase loot boxes using in-game or real-world currency. The randomized nature of contents encourages players to keep buying, which some consider a compulsion similar to gambling as players aim to get better rewards. Much like the Netherlands, Belgium is cracking down on what it perceives as game industry giants, blurring the line between game gaming and gambling. Uh, the current nature of loot box is available in, in popular titles including Overwatch, FIFA 18, thank you, somebody finally talks about that shit, hmm. border close to BGC's definition of gambling, a game in which costs from the player can lead to loss or win 
for at least one person and where chance plays a role in the progression of the game the winner or both or worth of the winnings wait overwatch no. excuse me yeah. no hold on a second yeah, yeah, yeah. i'm hold just on thinking that's tick. bullshit cuz overwatch FIFA, you get maybe, but overwatch you get loot drops every time you rank up or you play like the arcade version and do like three games in a row they're completely no, free drops no it's not even that it's not even that it's not even that it's the fact that in Overwatch, the only drops you get are skins, and they contribute nothing to progression of the game because there is no progression of the game. Yeah, well, you, you could you say your level, and then you can unlock like. Uh, well, you can't better. pay money for that. No, no, no. I'm, I'm just saying that's the only progression there is. Like a skin does not contribute in the way, so I would have to disagree that Overwatch um, is that thing. The only thing I could say it is along that lines is people spending money to get more loot boxes because they want a skin really bad but then again can't you just buy the skins mm, Overwatch has made it very difficult too they've reduced the number of duplicates that you can possibly get mm. but if you've got like the entire thing that you still have to get you either have to put in a shit ton of hours in order to get them all yeah. or you have to like get really lucky with those hits yeah, um, I mean, yeah. Another game again. As much as I bloody hate the fan base, um, League of Legends did their loot system very goddamn well, because you had in-game currency which you got after every game, and that allowed you to save up and, like, say, buy a new champion. Oh my God, sake, Malad, another thousand bits, Jesus Christ, dude. <laughs> anyway, don't complain. It's still, it's Don't just, complain. It's, it's still insane. But it, it's like you save up in-game points, and you can like eventually buy new champions. Um, they also had another one which you did have to pay like real life money for, and the only thing you could really buy with them is like additional like um, item setup slots or skins for the game. Which this item setup slots was literally just ease of play basically. Like, instead of, like, having to change stuff around between every game, you just had it all set up. And the skins are literally just aesthetic. But before I stopped playing, they introduced their own drop system, which is, you know, keys and chests, and it had a chance to drop skins. Sometimes even the really rare ones as well. And it had a trade-up system. So, it's like, yeah, you can either just play the game a lot and you'll eventually get what you want, or if you want, you can dive some money in to get this aesthetic which does not change gameplay I mean th there was tiny little differences in some of them oh my god it's just spamming more bits dude thank you um, for example there was one skin where one of the support characters instead of like having legs on the skin it had wheels and it gave one additional movement speed which means sod all like it's not noticeable but it's just a funny little gimmick. So, it, yeah, that's the way you do loot boxes, basically. You give the option to pay for stuff, but as long as it doesn't change how the game plays to win, um, and if you give an option, like, you'll get the stuff anyway just by playing. That's the best way to go about it. Not, oh, you want, you, you want this cool stuff? You have to pay. You want to win the game? You've got to pay more. And mobile games are the worst for it. Yeah, I, I think the, the the thing that really tipped all of this off was pretty obvious. Um, you know, Star Wars Battlefront 2, to the point where they've completely removed that progression system and replaced it with a new one. Oh, God, yeah. Um, oh, I remember hearing stories. I was like, Jesus it's Christ. It's just like, but, but at the same time, this kind of um, sort of gambling system... It is more prevalent in mobile games than it is on the consoles or on the PC. Um, there is actually a game I'm playing sort of... Uh, it's. I don't know why I picked this thing up because it looked like such a ripoff. Um, if you've ever heard of it, it's called Hustle Castle on um, iOS or Android. And the name has nothing to do with the hustle. Um, but it basically... Yeah, it sounds fucking stupid. <laughs> um, but it's just like ripped off um, Simpsons slash Family Guy graphics. 
like the character designs look like fucking go animate <laughs> um i'm not kidding look it up well, what's it called again in, hustle in castle game, yeah but in this game which i just have put on leisurely like I'll pick it up once every hour or so to see what the, everything's doing in there. Oh, it's this whole Jesus, like tower that... building thing. So yeah, that looks saying? like a like a rip off bloody um, Family Guy. Yeah, it is, um, but it's actually not terrible as far as the game is concerned. But in here, you can um, you you get chests essentially mm -hmm. in order to make weapons. Or in order to get equipment or gear or anything like that to help out the uh, citizens in your uh, castle. God's sake, I just realized what this is like. This is like Fallout Shelter. Jesus. Ah. The, the gameplay is exactly like Fallout Shelter. There, there it's was, just with a medieval castle. There was I something just... you just remind me I actually want to bring up in regards to um, like loot drops and, and stuff like that. Um, this on, like, on a side tangent. So... Obviously, you know, there's like the, the pay to win and people sinking money into games a lot to get better stuff. Um, just so I'm not on Fallout Shelter, the interesting thing about that is um, people always thought, oh, the mobile game is for like, you know, not proper like hardcore players and stuff like that, or some stupid phrase along the same lines. However, um, Fallout Shelter actually got a lot of like hardcore people playing it. And trying to perfect the game and get the best stats, and they it got looked into. And the reason they found, and why people were sinking so much money into it, is because one, they were able to enjoy the game, because it wasn't PvP with someone constantly trying to screw them over. Just on a little side note there, which is kind of interesting. So they were sinking well, more money into the game to try and get better stuff. Because they were safe in the knowledge that their stuff wouldn't be raided by another player. Well, it, getting back to the point. Yeah, sorry. Just um, an interesting side topic. So you can get chests, which give you like a random chance to get like decent quality loot and that kind of stuff, or you can just straight up buy it. Yeah. Um, and that kind of is the loot box thing, but that is so incredibly prevalent in a lot of mobile games. Yeah. I understand I understand that you're trying to get it out there for free and you either want to get your advertisements on there, which is a fair option. That's not terrible. Mm -hmm. um, as long as it's an option and I don't have one of those fucking advertisements in every five seconds of this puzzle game that I could design myself if I put in the time. Um, but it, it, it's just like, you know... Mm. This, gets, it, it, this gets tiresome. You know, the, the loot system is so prevalent in mobile gaming that no commission ever yeah. would want to tackle it's, with it. It's and a massive. I think you're going like you're fucking hypocrites for not. It's a massive. It's a massive money grab, and the worst offenders are the ones where it's just like if it's got like a life system, and you run out of lives, and it goes, oh by the way, um, you're never continuing this game again unless you stop paying us. Because I've played oh. one of those games, I didn't realize it did that until I ran out of lives. I'm like, okay, you're getting an uninstall and a negative review. <laughs> it's it's pathetic, it really is. But back to the point of like the article, um, yeah, loot boxes need to be looked at carefully. But I don't know why they're including Overwatch in that list because Overwatch does not have that issue. Well. I just hate loot boxes in general, so as long as Overwatch isn't impacted severely as a game and the loot boxes are removed, I'm not going to complain. Because I remember a long time ago where you bought one cartridge and the complete game was in there. So, mm. fuck you people that decide that your stuff ain't finished or you want to put together this special edition of a movie. I'm looking right fucking at you, George Lucas. How about you just <laughs> finish your shit and move on to the next damn project. <laughs> See, just on the side of it, that I think part of the issue with the games these days is the high demand for stuff to be out. So games get pushed out, which, yes, on the cover they are a finished product, but they're missing content that the devs wanted to put in, so that later becomes DLC.
Oh, there's even early access games, but we're digressing, so let's. Yeah, let's let's just, let's just move on. Let's 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 get it. Let's go into a more lighter-hearted oh, topic. <laughs> so. All right, the... ten, you got ten minutes. Go. <laughs> okay, so this thing we found, which is quite interesting, uh, Marvel gets its first official Chinese superheroes. What? Yeah. So the first ever Chinese superheroes have officially entered the Marvel universe. Arrow and Lin Lai are just two of the batch of Chinese characters making their debut in graphic novels this week. Co How is it by spelled? L-I-N-L-I-E Yeah, that's it. Okay. Uh, so co-authored by Marvel and NetEase, one of the China's biggest online comic platforms, they're, they are a clear push by Marvel to attract more fans across the lucrative Chinese market. We have even seen them in interacting with Marvel heroes like Hulk and Iron Man. So, who are these new superheroes? Uh, Lin Lai is the main protagonist, or is it, uh, main protagonist in one of the new comics, which loosely translates as Warriors of the Free uh, Sovereigns. The story revolves around the eight-year-old boy who picks up an ancient sword to fight against Chi Yu, a reincarnated villain intent on destroying mankind. The second comic, which translates to Cyclone, features Arrow, known as Li Ling. She's an architect by day who happens to be able to control air currents. By night she uses her superpowers to save her city from various villains. So Marvel is expanding their universe into the Chinese market basically. So it's kind of seeming like it's a mix up of like Marvel style superheroism with I would say more manga anime-ish by the looks of things. I mean, I'm, cu I'm curious to know more, but it definitely looks interesting. I'm like, I want to know more. And I, if these not comics manga, are... anime, just just manga. Anime is animation, manga is comic. I know, but I mean, like, the, like the style of it, like how it's like drawn and come across. In other words, kawaii as fuck. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll go with kawaii as fuck. <laughs> By but... the way, I'm I only I said that ironically. Yeah, I know you did. <laughs> I am not a fucking weeaboo. <laughs> if you ask me what Full Metal Alchemist is, I'm going to say it's that thing with the chimera. Ugh, fuck Because you. I know it gets on everybody's shit. I hate you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Fucker. Excellent timing, Mallard. Excellent timing with the salt cheer. Oh, I just uh, saw anyway. that as well, you son of a bitch. <laughs> anyway, um, as I was saying... But the thing, the thing with me and Marvel, is that I have not been approving of their. Um, you have emotes, god fucking damn it! Yeah, I have a little emote. I had. I then again, you have stickers, and I don't. <laughs> uh, as as I was saying, um, <laughs> the main thing about it is I have not been impressed with Marvel lately. <laughs> I'm about... Oh, I'm not talking shit about Full Metal Alchemist. I'm talking shit about Weeaboos. I could give less of a shit about the show. Jero, Jero, but, uh, Jero is not a weird mood anyway. My, let me explain my point. Um, I have not been impressed with Marvel lately, except for the movies. And even though I didn't particularly like in, uh, Avengers Infinity War, I enjoyed the hell out of it, and I recognize it's a good film. I just didn't personally prefer it. Um, Fair enough. But... Let me go ahead and clue something into you guys. They've been making some really stupid decisions, like having Riri Williams, this um, this black college girl, be Iron Man now, out of fucking nowhere, and be Stark's protege with seemingly no explanation. Um, and in order to consolidate her being Iron Man now, they did the thing that they thought was the best decision. They killed Rhodey. They killed War Machine. And guess who they made the new War Machine? The Punisher. Frank Castle. What? So no. they took they took one of the best black characters in the Marvel Universe and tried to insert this other black character that has seemingly no real motivation, no backstory, nothing, no attachment to anything or anyone, no reason to exist. Other than the fact of we need to be more social justice y, <laughs> insert her in and decide, okay, so Rhodey's probably going to be the next Iron Man because he's been Iron Man before. What should we do? Kill him or replace him with Frank Castle? 
Yeah. Great. So now War Machine is literally a war machine and not an upstanding guy that actually works for the United States government. Yeah. Bad move. That's a bad move. I do not agree with that. Please, oh dear God, do not let the Marvel movies go that way. <laughs> they won't. They. I don't believe they will. Um, whoever's been doing the Marvel films has actually been doing a great job. But as far as the comics... <sighs> I'm going to go ahead and and quote or paraphrase uh, my friend David on this. Mm-hmm. DC's been killing it in comics but sucking at movies and Marvel's been suck been uh, killing it in movies and sucking at comics. So Yeah, I can agree to that. <laughs> There's yeah, my love with it, some more salt. Like... There's some salt for you, Jerry. I don't know why they killed Rhodey. That's my only, that's my biggest goddamn problem. In terms of me personally, that's my only goddamn problem because I like War Machine. Not even more, but I used to. And don't even get me started with Captain America Hydra. Oh, no, 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 it's okay, it's okay. It didn't happen. I'm sick of your parallel universe bullshit, Marvel. It's okay, it didn't happen, it didn't happen, it's fine. But it did happen. No, it's on no, paper. No, no, it didn't. It didn't. It, didn't. We, it happened, no. and it's there. <laughs> no, it didn't. It didn't. It's all in your head. It's all in your head. <laughs> I'm going to find the damn picture. <laughs> oh, my God. There's more salt than another thousand minutes. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I've just noticed. Mountain is now giving me over 10,000 biddies. What the shit? <laughs> Don't. Complain. I'm not. I'm just in a bit of shock, okay? <laughs> Damn, dude. There! It happened! I found it! No, 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 it didn't. No, it didn't. No. It's right there. You cannot refute it. <laughs> I just did. Next topic! <laughs> Next topic! Oh! <laughs> so, uh. so, this one's got a bit more on the... Um, Sort of sanity front, which again, it would just had me. It's not your turn, isn't it? No. Oh yeah, shit. Sorry, we just went on topic for so long. I and you were on your rant. <laughs> that was eight minutes. That was the shortest one we've done. Yeah, usually we're quite bad. <laughs> Even so, you... Asus is making a gaming smartphone. Okay. Tell us more. <laughs> okay, so, um, alright, give me just a second to taste this shit. <laughs> a gaming smartphone from Asus under their Republic of Gamers brand? Sure, after Razer announced its gaming-centric smartphone, followed by Xiaomi's Black Shark and ZD- ZTE Nubia Red Magic. I'm sorry, ZTE, according to the rest of the goddamn world, which is wrong. The gaming phones are suddenly trending. Still, we suggest you take this sort of information with a bit of skepticism as nothing has been officially been confirmed. Excuse me. And it's all just removed from mail. Interesting. It seems pretty... It seems that plenty of renowned... Renowned, not renowned. <laughs> gotta put an ED at the end. PC hardware manufacturers are jumping on the bandwagon by trying their luck in the smart... Remember Acer's Predator 8 tablet? No, I don't. Um, the gaming label has been selling a ton of PC hardware over the past couple of years, so why wouldn't a gaming smartphone be successful as well? I don't blame them, because gaming hardware is actually really fucking cheap, not in terms of the price, but in terms of the actual hardware that's involved with it. If you want something that's actually worth the money, go for something that's like enthusiast branded, because they actually load that thing up with a bunch of features. Yeah. A good example, my uh, Z270 motherboard that I had in here is terrible. One of the PCIe slots is broken. My new Maximus 9 Apex motherboard that's loaded up with a bunch of shit, it's awesome. Yeah. And there's a $50 price difference. Jesus. Anyway. Um, let's see here. It all makes sense according to an inside source. Asus is ready to launch its gaming-oriented smartphone during this year's Computex in Taiwan, June 5th through 9th. Of course, no specs were disclosed, but it's not hard to guess the main hardware. A uh, Snapdragon 854, 845 chipset will surely power up the device, and nobody cares about the rest of these specs because they have no idea what they're reading. Um, and the frame rate, what they're saying, is probably somewhere in the realm of 120 or even 144 hertz. In other words, that's really, really 
fast screen refresh rate. Yeah. 144 hertz is what my expensive as hell Asus monitor runs at. And I need a GTX 1080 in order to even get close to the power of that thing. Um, and so the pricing, we'll just have to see what happens. Mm. Uh, it's pretty clear that gaming is starting to move to mobile devices because one, kids are the most vulnerable targets on mobile devices. I cannot explain this enough. Oh yeah, um, definitely. And, if, and of course, we're also seeing platforms like, or I'm sorry, we're also seeing games like Fortnite and PUBG move to mobile platforms. And I'm sitting here going like, why are you doing this to yourself? Yeah, like m mobile just... gaming, like gaming, like not just like on a mobile, but like on the move sort of thing. It's it's starting to get more and more traction. Like phones are getting like you know more powerful. You know we got like say well, the Google Play Store that's got so much like crap on it. Like you said, Fortnite's on there, PUBG's on there, Minecraft is like on there, and even you can well, even argue I mean, that the, the Switch is sort of looking at that sort of way as well. It's like yeah, you can play it at home in comfort as well, but hey, you gotta take a like a thirty minute like train ride. Ah, keep playing your game on the go. Don't worry about it. Well, the thing is, I can understand stuff like the Switch and yeah. for FPSs and all that good stuff because, <coughs> excuse me, it's a much larger screen. Stuff on a tablet, I can understand. Stuff on a phone that's great for platforming and stuff that we got like in the Game Boy Advance era and all that good stuff. But objectively speaking, all of the 3D-based first-person shooters or third-person shooters or even some flight simulators absolutely suck mm. on a really small screen. Because it is a really small screen. Yeah. I mean, even Star Fox 64 for the 3DS, which they reported, I have that game. It's kind of fun. But the screen's too damn small! Yeah, you can't see everything properly. It's just like... Jesus. There are some mobile games that work. PUBG and Fortnite, new. I would have to agree there, though it's insanely popular. It is, and it's it's going to be raiding people's wallets. It's going to be raiding parents' credit cards that decide that it's a smart idea to put that information on their kid's smartphone before letting them have it um, and giving them a separate line and that kind of stuff. Mm. Now, me, I had to pay for this shit, or I had to get it off of a, uh, uh, what is it called? I had to get it off an iTunes card because I used to have an iPhone. Next Nintendo console, a phone. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, but yeah, you just remind me as well. Earl Crumbs, like years ago, this wasn't long after, um, like Minecraft hit like the mobile. Uh, I had, like a Minecraft T-shirt on. I was sitting waiting for um, like the underground like show up, and this fucking like eleven-year-old kid or something on the other platform literally screamed over the station, "Hey, you got a Minecraft server on your phone?" And I'm just like. I just looked at him, sort of like give him a dead pan, a thousand yard stare, and just went, no. <laughs> I didn't even have it on my phone. I was just like, why the fuck are you screaming at me, kid? <laughs> it's just like, Jesus. It's crazy, but yeah, the, the danger of the game on the phone, like you say, is the kids dipping into the parents' wallets. But at the same time, there are parental safety things that you can turn on to stop that shit happening. <laughs> Do you really think anyone actually pays attention to that crap? I would. I'm okay. Pr I'm pretty we're, sure we're talking... um, my tech support we, we, does we as are, well. <laughs> we are talking about a majority of the world here. And they are all idiots. Exactly. Because humans. <laughs> humans. Gum. Humans. Humans. Scam. <laughs> Uh, next topic. Next topic. All right. So again, this one's a bit more on the uh, like, like I said, sort of like science side, uh, which is kind of interesting. Uh, so red squirrels may have introduced uh, leprosy to Britain and by extension Europe, apparently. So leprosy. Yeah, so red squirrels may have brought leprosy to Britain more than a thousand years ago, scientists have said. Swiss researchers oh. said DNA oh. taken from a 5th century victim of the disease in Essex revealed the same strain of leprosy carried by red squirrels today. The discovery reports the theory that the rodents, once prized for their meat and fur, played a role in the spread of the disease throughout medieval Europe. Grey squirrels were not introduced into the UK until the 19th century. 
Scientists at the University of Zurich took samples of leprosy DNA from 90 Europeans with skeletal deformations characteristic of the disease from 400 AD to 1400 AD. From the fragments, they reconstructed 10 new genomes, complete genetic codes of medi oh Jesus, this is a word medieval Mycobacterium leprae, the bug that causes leprosy. One of the one was from the Great Chesterford, Essex, and dated to be between 415 and 545 AD. It was the leprosy genome, the oldest yet constructed, that contained the red squirrel clue. So this is basically saying the cute little critters that sit in the tree and stop the face of fucking nuts pretty much brought leprosy to the UK and by extension Europe. See, I was thinking you were talking about something more recent, and I'm just going like, okay, squirrels bring disease. Well, it's a recent subject that they've just discovered, but it's just like, literally the fuzzy little things in the trees, they, they cause this. And in more on the story underneath the topic, it literally says that Viking trade in red squirrels may have spread leprosy. So not only were they just sacking and raiding a load of uh, churches and whatnot, their trade may have spread this further. Again, it's just if that's the case, that's Jesus. How many lives have been affected by that over so many years? Also wonders how far it's actually spread due to it. So, <laughs> Hi Lilith, yeah, I quite think, a subject. <laughs> I think Monty is um I think Monty is able to come on today if you want to invite him. Um he's, he... he's been busy because he's been busy with school and shit, but he just got home. Uh he's online, sure. Okay. Um one second. In insert technical difficulties music. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I don't know how much more I can really like say on the topic, but it's just ugh. my mind just got blown away when I saw the title. It's like seriously, squirrels were like the cause of this. And I mean, it wouldn't doubt me. I mean, last. In that time period, you wouldn't have people like going like, "Oh, we need to cook this thoroughly to get all the leprosy out." Yeah. Even and even if that's even possible. Um. So. But again, it just makes you wonder, like, how, if that's the case, how far did like the the trading of red squirrels across pretty much the entire of the North Sea? How much did that cause leprosy to spread? Like. Would it just be contained in like one small like area, or, like only one country? Would it would it even spread at all? Like, what was the cause Incoming. of it in the first place? Incoming. Mao. Hello. Hey, Monty. I had my headphones on full. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> that How was very painful. <laughs> <laughs> you have a taste of what I feel when Leon screams in my ears. Leon oh, screams God. or Leon screams, or is that the same thing? Both. Leon scrim. <laughs> Leon scrim. Yes. Anyway, Wait, what the fuck um, am I doing? I have a very interesting topic that actually pertains to our fandom, and oh God, I'm cringing now. Jesus. Oh no, do we have to? If it's cringe, do we have to? Gerard, the art okay, itself is isn't this? cringe. The art is. Oh, the, um, okay. Arizona GOP lawmaker, that's a Republican or right wing, asks Twitter what a furry is and gets a fursona from hashtag red for Ed supporter. Oh, geez. So what started out as a Twitter debate over education ended Friday with an artist gifting representative Kelly Townsend with her own fursona, a cartoon-like anthropomorphic version of herself courtesy of a freelancer with the furry community. But what's a furry? Let's give scientists a say. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> the International Anthropomorphic Research Project. Hang on. IART, That's a thing? That it is, is a definite, thing. That is a thing. I think they're based out of Canada. Well, then again. I Most wouldn't be surprised. Are based out of Canada. Uh, a team of social scientists studies furries and their fandom. The group says furries are fans of media that features walking, talking, animal character. No shit! Let's get past this. 
Oh, wow. Very so, interesting. So, so just to, I already just got to, this part. Jero, just to recap, we're listening to people who are paid to say stuff that we already know in a way that sounds intelligent but really isn't. Well, let me put it to you this way. People who read this article probably are not furries. Yeah. Yeah, but the um, thing is, is they're putting it in a way that you... sounds intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> you can say, I've, like, already it, on... just look, I've already linked it. Look at it. <laughs> um, uh. That's that's the... Oh, my fucking God. It's cool that she's going with this. She even put up a post on her, on her actual, like, um, political Twitter account. Okay. And with, with the hashtag fursuit Friday, even yeah. though she's not in a fursuit. I, I've just, uh, let, let's see here. One second, I've just realized this little small uh, bit here, and I actually like this. So, furries uh, provocatively, uh, pro, uh, can't, I've got a case of the Jalen. <laughs> furries dress up sometimes misunderstood as a fetish. But IRAP is saying to say that furry fans are drawn to the practice because it creates a sense of community, provides a a recreation and offers escape from the mundaneness of day life as well as appreciation of anthropomorphic art and stories thank you Jesus Boom. Christ that one <laughs> paragraph there is yes thank you so fucking much we needed that yeah. okay but how did an Arizona Republican politician get a persona in a Twitter exchange about hashtag bread for Ed uh, Towson wrote that one of the leaders of the movement had granted an interview to a Russian sanctioned propaganda station. What? Jesus. The month old interview on Loud and Clear is described as a talk with Noah Carvelli, a public educator in Phoenix who frequently publishes and speaks about public education and democracy in the United States. Carvelli, age 23, a music teacher and one of the leaders of edu Arizona Educators United, the grassroots group that helped organize the teacher walkout did not immediately respond to the Arizona uh, Republic's call for comment, which I think is the um, uh, publishing company or something like that. Mm -hmm. Carvelli, a second year teacher in the Littleton Elementary School District from Pecatonica, Pecatonica Illinois, population 2,195, has said that many teachers live paycheck to paycheck and called on Arizona lawmakers. It's just politics shit. Yeah. Um, let me try and... So, oh my fucking god, this article is formatted so bad! Yeah, okay, it's horrible. Let's, let's recap for the listening audience what but, was just said about the Okay, TV. so... Um, basically, let money what's going on? Let money... All right, go for what? We're teachers, we live on fucking nothing, and also I work in the middle of bumfuck nowhere, Illinois. Is that, is that what we're... Is that it? To the, to the, uh, yeah, 2,000 people is kind of small. Yeah, that is um, tiny. It's weird, we live in a time where we can say that. Anyway, uh, here's another nah. foreign, another foreign link. Care to explain why he was giving an interview to the Russian state radio during class with children present, or how he obtained permission to speak on tightly controlled Russian state radio. Um, and that that was a tweet. Now that was a message from Miss Towsend. Mm. Uh, let's see here. Loud and clear show is air radio Sputnik, which is funded by the Russian government. A 2017 Washington Post story said Sputnik's lineup included President Donald Trump supporter Lee Stranahan, a former Breitbart reporter. And so she's like, "Oh wow." So why is the leader of Red for Ed giving an interview for Sputnik Radio? Russian sanctioned propaganda station. Hashtag Red for Ed exposed. <laughs> okay, so she's actually this is interesting. Uh Twitter user Pepper Coyote. Hey. Oh Jesus, Pepper. I didn't realize it was him. Uh with a profile picture of an anthropomorphic cartoon fox responded with Towson's responded to Towson's tweet saying public education is a socialist concept and after a lifetime of trying to get it to work with capitalism, we'd rather give democratic socialism a shot. Towson replied with, and there it is. Um, yeah, there is there is below, and then the next phrase is: Imagine going to all. Oh, for fuck's sake! Don't click on it, you stupid thing. Imagine, imagine going, to going all this, to all this trouble to get. Yeah, you say it. Oh, imagine going to all of this trouble to get elected to the state legislature of Arizona, only to get logically destroyed by a furry. Um, <laughs> please, and she's like, please educate me as to what a furry is. And then a response, ma'am, I'm not really sorry for what's about to happen to you. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. And yeah, there And she Okay, no, I know what this is. I I 
just scroll down. This is something people have linked to me because she then got a persona drawn by an artist on DeviantArt who is also called Kavuli. Oh, well then. This is what this is now. Uh, this is like, no, it's not me. It's like, I... And if you scroll down even further, you see a guy in a Shrek costume, and he's like, how about this? Is this an original persona? <laughs> yeah, that's... <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. Close enough, probably. No. Yeah. But no, it's like... That, what the, what a way to get introduced to the fandom. Like, seriously. <laughs> that's pretty fucking cool. Not gonna lie. Where, with, with, the, with, the Shrek, with the Shrek costume, where's the... Uh, there's a fetish for that button. <laughs> that probably is that's a scary right. thing. No, I, I I have a button that it's... that makes like a little noise that I wrote. There's a fetish for that on, but I don't know where the hell the button went. It, I actually spent money on this. Find that when... button. <laughs> I, I didn't actually spend money on it. It's I made like... it out of spare electrical parts, but whatever. It's like Shy's nut button. <laughs> nut. <laughs> I nut. made it out of spare. He was Electric spamming that so again. hard last night, he just got absolutely <laughs> hammered with subs. <laughs> Maybe that's what I'll use the old phone for. What, another uh, button? Yeah, because uh, my phone pretty much completely broke, so I bought a new one. Ah, fair enough. But yeah, it's, geez, what a way to get in the fandom. Well, I don't know if she's in the fandom, I mean, <laughs> if she wants to be, she's got a persona! <laughs> That's just fucking weird. <laughs> Can you imagine that? She just starts like turning up to like um, like MFF or something like that. <laughs> She's got like a full fursuit and everything. <laughs> Ooh, I have extra pockies. <laughs> Yo, any anybody who's like listening to this and you're going to MFF, keep an eye on the registration list to see any names pop up. <laughs> Wait, um, oh, it just occurred to me that Pepper Coyote is a music teacher. Yes, I think I I think he is. I'm not entirely. Oh, wait, no, no. The music teacher is the one that was on the um, that was on Sputnik Radio, um, and Pepper Coyote just kind of jumped in because that I don't fucking know. But point is, this whole incredibly weird situation resulted in a political representative getting a persona and. and Nothing involving politics was solved that day. Yeah, like at this point, I'll, I'm just reading a bit lower down here. Um, the response to like the the picture being drawn, <clears throat> one of the pictures is um, as a working artist, I normally charge for my art, but since you generally seem curious about getting a persona, this is a free free. Just remember, the teachers are educational foundation for America youth, and they are deserve better pay for the hard work. And then further down, the response to that is, how much do you normally charge for this? I certainly want to pay you. And then she, later on, best day in months. <laughs> that is. She's incredible. <laughs> she's incredibly oblivious. That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah, she's just like there. <laughs> but... <laughs> However, <laughs> that that resolves our last topic, which means we get to go to not J the onion. J Derek, can I just point out? We've got through the first part of the fur cast within the first hour. We usually keep going to this shit by 20 past 11. I think me cutting off the articles is actually helping. Yeah, I say we do need to like tighter control on it because we really fly off the rails all the time, especially when there's like more people involved. But yes, you're right. It is time to move on to the Don Onion. And as I say every week, if you don't know what Not The Onion is, it is basically news stories that sound like complete absolute dog shit, but are in fact true. Uh, Ger also, there's no onions involved. Exactly. There's yes, no, there's th no actual... Jero, take us away first this week, my friend. Oh, let's see here. I just opened the page, so let's find some. Oh... God's sake. Oh, no. What? The what? first article I see what? makes me so incredibly sad. Where the fuck is the Twitch chat? Oh, wait, which one? <sighs> Republican who claims Holoclo Holocaust was orchestrated by gay Nazis wins enough support 
for Massachusetts governor primary. How? Um, Do we want to... There are so many Do, questions uh, that have just been raised. Uh, the can, author of guys, a book claiming sorry, that the Holocaust just was interrupt a second? I've just heard a jingle. I've just heard a jingle of money. Where, where, where's my... Oh. Where's my Streamlabs? Streamlabs? Monty gave you seven pounds thirty-eight cents. Oh, Monty, thank you. I got my paycheck yesterday. What did I expect me to do? Still, thank you. <laughs> anyway, continue. The, the author of a book claiming that the Holocaust was orchestrated by gay men who ran the Nazi party. Nazi. Wow. <laughs> <that's me. laughs> Nancy party. The Nazi party. <laughs> killing Nazi. Jalen, you're spreading your curse. Well, appear on. Well, no, I'm just Southern. Well, here on the Massachusetts Goober National, Goober, I think that's supposed to be Goober National or Gubernatorial primary ballot later this year after garnering enough support at the Republican Party's state convention last week. Scott Lively will now face off with incumbent Governor Charlie Baker in September's primary. Lively wrote a 1995 book titled The Pink Swastika. <laughs> The pink swastika. <laughs> say it. You can the, say it. And um, uh, the pink swastika. <laughs> also, um, whoever, someone, I can't read that because that is the most horrible neon green I've ever seen. But whatever the who the hell has that says. Now that's what I call an oxymoron. Oh, that's Jorick yeah. saying that. I can't read that because it's so fucking neon. It is so green. Well, it's not like he chose that color. On my end, he's yellow. Anyway, um, let's see here. In which he asserted the Nazi party took power in Germany in the 1930s and controls by militaristic homos... <laughs> God damn it! Militaristic homosexuals who inspired the murder of... <laughs> okay, we, need to get some, we need to get someone who can actually say this with a straight face. <laughs> All right. The Holocaust okay. also saw the persecution of a number of other groups, including sexuals. Lively's claims have been roundly debunked by historians. I would sure fucking hope so. But the controversy surrounding Lively does not end there. He, he's the founder of an anti-LGBT group, Abiding Truth Ministries, which is listed as a hate group by the Southern Poverty Law Center. He is also a sta staunchy anti-abortion, which I could give less of a shit about. On his campaign website, Lively stated that abortion is the intentional killing of a living human being and should be criminalized. Yes, it's killing a group of cells. Oh my fucking god, you do the same thing whenever you mow the fucking lawn. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. No, just click the damn link and read that bullshit. I've had enough for today. Here's the thing. Massachusetts is not a red state. He's not going to win. And if he does, I'm leaving this damn country. Oh, my God. Oh, I'm going to fucking die over here. Uh, oh, my Christ. <laughs> oh, my God. How did... How does stuff like this happen? Like, seriously, how does... <laughs> oh... I think we're good on that. <laughs> Jorik says, Kavili, that wheezing has a higher frequency than Lee squeaks. <laughs> Welcome to the weekly forecast of Kavuli Gets High. And... <laughs> oh my god, I love this damn site. <laughs> oh. Okay, I'll need to collect myself. What, what have we got here? <sighs> okay. What have we... Oh my god, what is this? Oh, Is it about Kansas cops? No, America, what are you doing? <laughs> oh. Dog shoots man. <laughs> Iowa pet pulls trigger on owner. <laughs> An Iowa dog owner was hospitalized after being unexpectedly shot by his pet while playing together. 
With best friends like these, who needs enemies? An Iowa man says his dog inadvertently shot him by the rough housing Wednesday. Richard Remy, 51, of Fort, Fort Dodge, told police he was playing with his dog, Bailu, on the couch and tossed the dog off his lap. He, he says oh when the Pitbull Labrador mix bounced back up, he must have disabled the safety on the gun in his belly band and stepped on the trigger. The gun fired strike on one of Remy's legs. He was treated in the hospital and released later that day. Remy told the Mr. newspaper that Bailu is a big wuss and lay down beside him and cried because he thought he had done something wrong. Well, I mean, he did. I mean, also, no. also, um, comment from Tobias, if abortion is murder, then masturbation is a house. Probably those gay Nazis again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Um, 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 Jer- <laughs> Jer- <laughs> and there they go again. Jer- 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 Get me right uh, back. <laughs> okay. Um, if we're willing to go into it, and if my Google would load, I have something that happened in my state a few months ago that actually goes with that. Again, if Google will load. Come on, seriously. Oh, sh- Jeez. Okay, I'm back. I, anyway, I, I, I have this. Mon- I have Monty this. might have a really good one. Right, I well, have this. One second, I just need to post the link to the dog, sh- dog shooting the guy. I'm sorry, but that man is an idiot for keeping his gun <laughs> if he's playing with a to dog. To me, it sounded like he said dog shit owner something. I don't dog, dog shit owner. <laughs> dog <laughs> shot owner. Dog shit owner. He is a dog shit owner. He can't even <laughs> stop his dog from shooting him. Oh my god. Oh. These, these topics. Jesus Christ. Okay. I think I'm okay. Alright, what, what you got, Monty? What, what you got? A Texas lawmaker has fired a, filed a bill to regulate, regulate masturbatory emissions as a represent as a slew of an- anti-abortion measures advocated by the state's politicians. Wait, what? Oh my god. I'm not hey, kidding. This was, a th- this, this was a thing. This was Link. a thing. And not only was it a thing, it was a thing that made it to Congress. Link. Link. <laughs> just, just look up Texas anti-masturbation bill. George, you can up. go right ahead and make that a meme whenever you want. This was originally proposed as a joke, but yeah, it mon- calls for, and I quote from the document, a $100 fine for emissions outside of a woman's vagina or created outside of a health or medical facility. What? Let me restate, $100 fine. So basically I would have to pay $100 every single time I masturbate. Seriously, everyone in this chat would be like, well, I'm screwed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just screwed. Like, straight up. <laughs> Wait, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. It's a... So, it's a, against an unborn child. So, what does this mean for, like... Let's be honest here, like, gay sex. I mean, how was that, like, growing up? Cause that was my question. It, I read in between... Okay, can I continue? Yeah, sorry. I, I just want to say this. I read in between the lines, so technically by the definition of what I just read, that also outlaws gay sex. Uh, I can also point out uh, what about um, oral play? Like, if you're not doing yeah, anything that down too. below? Uh, that, that's, that raises a bunch of questions. <laughs> also, <laughs> I will quote here. If I can. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just reading Tobias's comment. Holy shit, the okay. Texas t- take my joke seriously. <laughs> no, they don't, apparently. No, that, that, I don't know. Anyway, um, oh, let me continue. This also requires the creation of a, and I quote, masturbatory assistance registry. Excuse me? <laughs> Ow. <laughs> I just smacked my wrist. Ow. Don't do that, oh Which will be considered... Okay. And after I said... <laughs> okay. And of a non-profit... 
organization in hospitals to provide a fully abstinent encouragement counseling, supervising physi physicians for masturbatory missions, and storage. Storage. <laughs> storage. What the fuck? <laughs> Hello, I'm uh, Dr. Pervert, and I will be uh, administering your uh, abstinence training today. Um, it's like, how are they? Okay, how are they going to enforce this? How? That was. <laughs> like se seriously, are they just gonna like you know have someone just like perving through everybody's windows? Like he's home alone again. His girlfriend's mm -hmm. left the country okay. for a week. What's he doing? Oh, that's a thousand dollars right there. <laughs> also, <laughs> this yeah, this is another part of it. Farr's bill requires the creation of a book booklet called A Man's Right to Know that must contain medical information related to the benefits and concern of a man seeking a this economy, I can't pronounce that, Viagra prescription or colonoscopy. And I quote, the booklet must contain artistic illustrations of each procedure. <laughs> what? <laughs> now, this is from the legal bill. Title HB 4260. Is this a bill that's passed? It got to Congress. It didn't pass, but it got to Congress. How did it even get to Congress? That doesn't even That's make my question. sense. Also, it also demands an attending physician administer a medically <laughs> unnecessary digital rectal exam before administering an elective vasconomy or colosta whatever procedure or prescribing Viagra. So is Viagra going to become the new Texas cocaine? I think I, I serious? Monty, I'm not entirely what? sure, but I think you mean vasectomy, and vasectomy, vasectomy. is when you use sides. V vasectomy. I I can't pronounce this shit. I'm, I I just drove home, and that was bullshit. So whatever. Anyways. But yeah, um, a, vasect a vasectomy is basically when they split your ball sack open and they t and they uh, tie your tubes. So you so whenever you ejaculate, you don't spit out sperm. <laughs> Guys, Tobias just brought up another good point. If it's failing to preserve the sanctity of life, when you come, what about all the sperm that die, even if you get a woman pregnant? Do you still get a fine? I don't know. A thousand dollars for each individual sperm. <laughs> that would resolve the national debt in seconds. But it would over also... half of the country would be serving jail time. Yes. <laughs> okay. Wait, half? You're being generous. <laughs> <laughs> More like seven, not eighty. How, okay, how much faith in humanity are we gonna have here? Eighty percent of people. H humanity. I have no faith in humanity. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see here. What other bullshit is there in this stupid thing? Uh, Anyways, yeah, that I, was a bill that oh almost. Oh my god! I found something amazing. What? You guys know that the new Star Wars movie Solo has come out. Oh yeah, yeah. going to see it yeah. uh, at CF. Think about your favorite really cheap party cup. Oh no. <laughs> wow. That brand deal wow. actually happened. <laughs> wow. Wow. How did... I mean, if it was like stuff on the cups... GG? But it's this... just the packaging. It... <laughs> <laughs> but, but we used a little bit more ink! <laughs> that has to count for something! We used a bit more ink. I mean, that's... More ink. That's branding at its finest right there. Columbia recently released the Echo Base collection of jackets inspired by the heroes of... Wait, no, that's not it. Uh... How do you read? <laughs> I sure do love the heroes of that's not it. It's the same. It's the same one. Heroes of the Rebellion on Planet Hoth. Other more expensive partnerships include the Nissan Rogue Collection. Mm -hmm. uh, at the LA Car Show last year, there were as many as seven Star Wars inspired vehicles were shown, but much to the chagrin of fans, they weren't for sale. You really wanted to drive a check in, you know, drive in traffic in Nissan Rogue with X-wing wings and a BB-8 you know, poking out the top. Um, 
Uh, Jared. Um, yes? I just thought of something. Go These solo cups are cheap. The yeah. only reason you buy a solo cup is because you're too cheap to drink with friends, so you have to drink solo. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. I mean, can some can, hello? Can, Either can, that can, or you're playing beer pong. Can, can we get beer a pong, um? Can we get an ambulance to the burns unit, please? Because damn. <laughs> well, if it was if you're using them for beer pong, then would you call them friends though? No. Oh, you would call yeah. them Dixie cups. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I'd call them fucking idiots anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, let's see here. Dolby has and oranges emblazoned with Star Wars related stickers are just plain stupid. The dark side doesn't need any potassium. <laughs> you might overlook something as simple as plastic cups on a the shelf at a Target or Walmart, but a second look at Solo's new Han Solo cup branding. Yes, it's very real, and as much as you want to hate it, it's both simple and brilliant. Honestly, a perfect way to promote on to promote the May 25th release of Solo: A Star Wars Story. There is even a contest on the company's website which entrance can win a solo party pack which includes a t-shirt, cups, and movie tickets to your <laughs> solo bration. Whoever made that fucking solo bration, are God. you fucking <laughs> kidding me? Get the fuck out of here. Who the oh, fuck comes Reed up with Ramsey, that? Reed Ramsey, I'm going to come to your house and I'm going to slap you. And I'm going to steal your whatever makes you a stormtrooper somehow because... That apparently is in his title. I, I don't know. Maybe right. he has Stormtrooper armor. I'm well, going to steal that shit. It's one second. Um, note, thanks for showing up, uh, buddy. You have a good sleep. Take care and see you later. Bye. Bye. See. Jeez. Um, the, the fuck next. is a competition? What the fuck? Next. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, I went and saw Infinity War. As a would we'll, we'll, uh, We're doing the movie... Stuff in it. I know we are. I, I just wanted to say that I understood absolutely fucking nothing. Someone's gonna have to catch me up. Oh Christ, I don't even know where to begin. <laughs> None of it made any goddamn sense. I just went there with two friends and I don't understand it. I Wait, get... what are you talking about? Infinity War. Well, I said we'll get to that in a bit later. So, next okay. dare topic. <laughs> Claws out. Seat hogging crab sparks subway confrontation. We used to, we uh, we're all used to cretins on the subway, but crustaceans. Video and photos have been circling on social media, f showing several live crabs taking a precious seat space during the rush hour Monday on line line one. Christina Hughes was on the subway at the time and posted a photo of the crabs on her Facebook page, along with a strange account of a passenger becoming enraged that the crabs scored sweet seats while she was left standing. <laughs> then a girl walked by thinking that there was a free seat, saw the crabs, let out a small shocked scream and kept walking. A few seconds later she came back, she comes storming back, she wrote on Facebook. The woman apparently fed up with the display of selfish behaviour began yelling at a man who appeared to be the owner of the crabs. What is this shit? What is this? Crabs the on seats so no one could sit down? <laughs> By all accounts, the crabs are breaching subway etiquette by putting their claws on the seat, but not everyone thinks they deserve what came next. You says the enraged woman swatted the crabs off the seats, launching one into another stunned rider's lap. That's crab assault, man, cried someone out. She just assaulted the crabs. The TTC's Brad Ross don't see e news. He was aware of the incident and reminded riders to abide by the rules. Crabs are not permitted on seats, even if they're accompanied by a hot drawn butter and a bib. He said, unless a crab is a service crab or emotional support crab, and we're doubtful that, that is the case here, they must be contained in a sealed carrier at all times. And even though there have been past reports of raccoons, cockroaches, and bedbugs hitching an underground ride from time to time, Ross says this was the first. I have no recollection of all the small instances, he said. <laughs> oh 
What the hell? <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you, Swift. Oh, my God. Oh, someone's got off my stream. Connor the Fox has followed. Dude, thanks for the follow. <laughs> Hope you're enjoying the stream, because I can barely fucking breathe right now. Jesus Christ. We'll be right back. Oh. Oh, my God. <laughs> She's assaulting the crabs. It has to be a support crab. Or an emotional support crab. Or crab. I have an emotional support crab. I I now want an emotional support crab support just crab. for the sake <laughs> to say I have an emotional support crab. In other news, Daniel Boone National Forest tells shooters to stop using the toilets as targets. Wait, what? <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> what the fuck is this? Kabul It is. Yeah. There, they they recently put a uh, roundabout in my town. Mm hmm But outside, on every entrance to the roundabout, there is a 10-foot by 24-foot sign that is a whole diagram of how to use a roundabout. Oh, my God. How can you read that when driving? That's impossible. You're going to learn that in two seconds. <laughs> and in every public building, they have a sign that shows you how to use a roundabout. That is insane. I just wanted to get that off my chest before I forgot. <laughs> They've got a couple of those nearby um, where I work, and it's a very simple <sighs> sign of here is the circle. There are two circles. This one goes here and here. This one only goes there. No, it's a full 10 by 24 foot fully colored with arrows yeah, and models. And... Yeah. Anyway. Daniel Boone National Forest staff members are asking the public to not use disallowed targets after employees said to clean up their remains of a toilet. <laughs> the London Ranger District says that using these types of targets creates an unsafe experience for others as it jeopardizes excuse me, as it jeopardizes mowers' safety. <laughs> uh, the park is asking shooters at the Whitman Branch shooting range to shoot paper targets only and to properly dispose of waste. Ra Rangers are also asking the public to not use shoot household lines. <laughs> If you notice, vi if you notice people violating the rules in the shooting range, you're asked to call on the ranger. Blah blah blah. Recreation staff recently had to clean up the remains of a porcelain toilet that was even used as a target at a Whitman Branch shooting range. Whitman! This creates an. This behavior creates an unsafe <laughs> shooting experience for others. Is visibly unappealing and is a safety hazard. Things, things to remember when enjoying. Well, yeah. Things to remember when enjoying the newly upgraded range. Behave appropriately. Leave the area better than you found it. Probably dispose of waste. Re respect the resource. Shoot paper targets only. Pack out all target trash, including spent casings and shotgun gels. Do not shoot household appliances or other items. <laughs> but the idea of just completely blowing up and riddling a porcelain toilet is funny. Well, they finally yeah. dethroned him. <laughs> I'm just sorry, I'm just laughing at Toby. I want an emergency support kobold for reasons. Toby, mm. the kobold will cause more damage than it's going to help. <laughs> oh my god. Seriously, how did these I can't. I just fucking can't. These things happen. For reasons. Oh, what, what, hang on, what the fuck is this story? Uh, hold the phone. <laughs> what is even this? The curious case of how a nine-year-old self-proclaimed cocaine dealer became an Instagram influencer. 
<laughs> Lil Tay, who says she's nine, has managed to evade social media platform rules and gain millions of followers despite age limits on holding accounts. Her case, among others, show how lax re regulation is when it comes to young social media influencers. A pint-sized girl wearing a, a jean jacket with tags still on fans a stack of $100 bills at the camera. She gets in the driver's seat of a red Mercedes-Benz, though her legs are too short to reach the pedals. <laughs> this is why you all fucking haters hate me. I can't even read what's going on. This shit cost me 200000 I'm only 9 years old. I ain't got no license, but I still drive a sports car, bitch. Your favourite rapper ain't doing it like little Tay. I think she's just really taking the piss, but it's just somehow just took off entirely. <laughs> Is this like the 21st century of the Joe Walsh song? I have no idea. <laughs> but, okay, I've got to give it to that little girl. She knows how to get a following fast, and that's worked. Because in the 21st century, it's only popularity that matters. I... I, to be honest, I don't care about the part of the fact that she pulled this off and pretty much got away with it. That's impressive. Like, <laughs> like what goes through a nine-year-old's brain to think, I know what I'll do. I'll go on Instagram. I'll pretend I'm a fucking drug dealer. I'll fan myself with hundred-dollar bills, pretend I own this car, and make more money than everybody else and call them all dumb bitches. It's just like, Wow. <laughs> Just 1.7 million Instagram followers and 150,000 subscribers on YouTube. Are you fucking kidding me? I watch too much Breaking Bad on my mom's Netflix. Jesus. <laughs> like... Is that, Jared, is that what we have to do to get popular? Like, pretend we're drug dealers or something? I mean, that's a good way to get arrested. A apparently not. I think the worst thing that's happened to her is her trit has been shut down. Hmm? <laughs> oh my, that's just insane. Oh no! It's no! It's oh! It's got. It gets worse as it goes down. It's going on about fucking Justin Bieber. Let's not just no. Tobias has a very important question for Kavuli. Is she gonna pretend to be a dealer now? I mean, if it gets popularity and you know, I don't get in trouble for it, I mean, <laughs> I mean, what can I deal in? I can, uh, I can, I can deal in bean boozled beans. I've got some, I've got some uh, sweet beans here. Taking oh. him beans. I can oh. deal some sweet memes. Do some some sweet memes, yeah. <laughs> what's what's, the, what's the current street value here's, of a sweet a... dank meme? <laughs> I'll leave, I'll here's, leave... here's that sponge gar meme. It's about ten bucks. I'll, I'll even throw in a free dab for you. <laughs> oh, you you want you want uh, a, a, a Ugandan knuckles? Oh, oh God! Be 50, that'll if be fifty, ever... man. Oh. Listen, if I ever for see that, that so stupid meme again, oh god, I hate that. <laughs> uh, uh, dude, gonna gonna lay you in a secret here. Got some sweet new product in, hot hot, hot off the, the the stores of Walmart. Something called Tide Pod, yo. You can't get this shit anywhere else. I've got the area locked down. <laughs> I'll hook you up. <laughs> I oh, I was trying to guess something yesterday. Mm -hmm. So we it's been the thing with Tide Pods for a while. Those have been circulating around, killing some people. I, Idiots, uh, yes. I've been trying to speculate what's going to be the next thing. Oh, the God. The next thing that kills a bunch of people? My guess is either Windex or toilet cleaner. <laughs> what do you guys think? Uh, to be fair, I would... No it, no, it needs to be something more innocuous. And we've also got summer coming up, so I think it's going to be citronella. It's gonna, that would make sense. What, what the about, fuck like, is those, citronella? Citronella that, that is would... bug repellent. What about um, what about flavored candles? No, that'd be winter. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this is a cinnamon like candle. Oh, I no, bet, no. I, as I soon as bet fall comes on... around. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I bet 
I bet flavored candles for next Christmas are going to be the number one killer of people by ingesting stupid things. Summer bug spray. I, maybe Windex for late spring, but bug no, spray. No, 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 not summer. bug spray. Not bug spray. I'm talking about the stuff that you like have anything that aerates in it and you just stick the whole oh, thing yeah, 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 oh yeah yeah oh yeah. yeah oh yeah i could see that happening what about what about like that colorful sunscreen what mm, i don't know what you mean it's probably an american product i have no idea i mean there's there like is this, a there's like this dyed sunscreen that looks like looks like ice cream kind of to me there's a whipped sunscreen maybe people I, I actually, maybe whipped sunscreen i actually Zinc used poisoning? to sell that it looks like whipped cream <laughs> yeah, uh, what what about zinc poison? Zinc poisoning from sunscreen. Huh. You would have to ingest a lot of it though for it to kill you. Uh... Oh, oh Jesus. Um. Okay, there's a face I did not expect to see in here. Rage Hound, welcome to the stream, Jesus. Um, hi. <laughs> uh, so for those of you that uh, don't know, uh. Rage Island is uh, quite a popular channel on YouTube. Uh, what is it? I think it's definitely over 20k subscribers by far. And is a very talented person. Especially when it comes to singing. Like, Jesus. So, yeah, thank you for visiting my little corner of the internet. <laughs> well, we're bas basically laughing our asses off at stupid dumb shit. Oh, it's 16.7? I thought it was 20. Guys, subscribe to Rage Hound. Guys, 20k. <laughs> not sponsored. N not sponsored. Not sponsored. <laughs> oh, right. Oh, are there any more dumb stories in here? I think we've got the best ones. I I'm, I I'm still betting on a Windex for this summer. Someone's going to do it. We, we've got a half an hour left, so... Oh, yeah. We, we are slowly running out of time. Uh, yeah, may as well move on to, as I said, just the general chitter chatter and whatnot. So, let, let's get the elephant out of the room. Infinity War. Okay, so who has seen it? I've seen it, Monty's seen it, and you've seen it. And anybody who's in the chat who has not seen it, you've got about 20 seconds to GTFO, because spoilers. Like, I'm... It's a warning. If you do not like spoilers, please leave right now just mute the thing we're not going to show anything on here but yeah. yes spoilers yeah just like you, you leave whatever because the well i'll try to avoid them but it's not going to it's probably not going to happen <laughs> i had a 10 buck coupon for amc and i still spent 20 bucks to take three people out to that movie it wasn't even close to worth it it's cuz so, you you have no context of previous movies so i'm like it made no goddamn sense Right. You know, All right. Let me so quickly. Over... Can I give my consensus uh... from what I saw? It's not going to make any sense in any context of anything, but I thought it was funny. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just you laughing at Rage Hound in the chat. Majira becomes Iron Man and Loki of Dub Shub in Infinity Wars. <laughs> you know what? That's that sure close enough. <laughs> what, what I saw is that this weird guy, like the, the, the purple great man, comes and steals a blue square thing from this guy with really long hair who's really pretentious for some reason. That's Loki. And then this really, and then this really strong British guy gets tied in iron for some reason by this weird Jedi guy who has like brain powers and shit. And then, and then this green guy comes out of nowhere, and then they shoot him back to Earth for some reason. And then. The, there's some other shit happens, something blows up, and then they go back to Earth, and then this guy falls through the ceiling <laughs> of this weird, like, Time Doctor guy, and then there's... The okay, this is going to take forever. Yeah, this is really going to take forever. I'm not going to continue. Okay, just... so we're coming yeah. right off the heels of Thor Ragnarok. In Thor Ragnarok, there was the Hulk, and you had Thor, obviously, and Loki yeah. became an anti-hero former... Super hero, anti-hero. We don't fucking we start, know what he is. <laughs> we start the game. We start the game with the Asgard um, refugee vessel basically blown to shit. Half of them are allowed to live. Half of them die. That's because Thanos has this whole idea of if you kill half of all life in the universe, everything will still be in balance. So he tries to get Loki to tell him where the Tesseract is. We've known it as the Tesseract for a while, but it's actually the space stone of on the Infinity Gauntlet, yeah. which controls space obviously yeah. um and that was first introduced in captain america the first avenger i would say we should just so, dub it down for 
back up a little bit more because this is probably still going to go over Monty's head because it's a lot of information. No offense to you, Monty, but it is a lot. No, I understand okay, what you're so... saying, kind of. See, it's the kind of that... that I'm getting. There's this guy who's purple who's Thanos and he's like, I want to destroy half the universe because I think people should die for some reason. Well, okay. Because I think it, I should wipe off half the universe. Hold no. on a second. <laughs> hold on a second. I got this resident nerd in the house. Excuse okay, me. So... Hello. No. You're not the only one, bitch. I saw it first. Don't give a shit. You over-explain <laughs> things all the time. Not this time. Uh, anyway. You just were! You were just fully going on about the goddamn Tesseract. Okay, Thanos is trying to get the Infinity Stones. There are six Infinity Stones. He can put them on the Infinity Gauntlet and use all of them at once without disintegrating. Thanos, the reason why he's doing this, trying to kill all life in the universe, is because... He saw that his home world was using up too many resources and thus killed itself due to overpopulation. And so he's trying to enforce this across all worlds and thinks that he's doing good. And it's up to the Avengers to stop him from wiping out half of life in the universe as we know it and getting the Infinity Gauntlet. However, spoiler alert, he gets all of it and accomplishes his goal. Yeah, the good guys do not win. Thanos succeeds again, all six stones, literally clicks his fingers, and boom, half of life in the entire universe is now gone. Just random half. Just disappeared. Hey, hey, hey Kavuli. Yeah. Because too many people have done this to me, mm. I don't feel so good. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> yeah! It feels so good when you do it to somebody else. It, no, I could never inflict that on somebody else. That's just cruel oh, and That's harsh. just like the most heart-wrenching scene. You it see this is. kid, Peter Parker, is just like, he sees it coming. Yeah, because like, you do realize, when we see um, Peter in Civil War, he's meant, to, he's meant to be around, like, 15 at that time. So in Infinity War, he's only just about 17. He is young, and this has just happened to him. I'm okay, like... I remember that. I, I understand most of it. It's just like, also, Toby, I don't have time, and honestly, superhero movies aren't my thing. The only reason I went is my friends forced me to. I still maintain it was your birthday. You could have told them to fuck off. <laughs> so, the reason I don't particularly like this film is because it ends on that extremely low note. So, with Empire Strikes Back, which a lot of people argue was the best um, Star Wars movie of all time. Don't give me that line was improv bullshit. We have so many fucking, this line was improv when it really wasn't. I am not going to believe anybody when they say that from now on. I'm sorry, Lilith. I just, no, I don't believe anybody with that. Lilith, anyway, if you can find saying, proof to debunk Jero, I would, I would really, really love to see the proof just to shut him up. Even the proof is just manufactured. Damn. Um, as I was saying, but the thing is, with Star Wars, The Empire Strikes Back, yes, they lost the Rebel base. Yes, Han Solo got put in Carbonite and sold off to Jabba the Hutt. But they still had the fleet. They still had the Falcon. They still had the main group there, and they were about ready to kick ass. And it was possible to deal a crippling blow to the Empire. They still had the ability to do it. With this one, Thanos has control of the goddamn universe. No, he d no. I'm gonna have to slightly disagree there because first of all, the gauntlet is wrecked to fuck. So him trying to use that again is probably gonna do damage to him more than anything else. Second of all, uh, the main group of Avengers, like when you say Avengers, the first people that usually come to people's minds are Thor, Hulk, and Iron Man, the ones that are still around. So they can still and Captain keep... America, excuse me. Sorry, Captain America as well. I, I do derp. So the main four people you think of, they are still around. On top of that, we we the Black Widow is still there, and unconfirmed if Hawkeye is still around. And on top Hawkeye of dis that, Hawkeye, Hawkeye disintegrated. We don't know yeah. that. And on top the of that, I if you watched, that. it was on the screen. If you watched the after credit scene, you see Nick Fury. Using a small device, and the final Captain Marvel is Captain Marvel. So I get where you're coming from initially, but I'll have to disagree. It is just as much as an ending as Empire Strikes Back. The good he guys have been. He eliminated all life in the universe. 
Gauntlet is wrecked. Also, Half. Time Stone. He can fix that shit. Um, it, uh, if we can use it, the Gauntlet might be his only way to control the stones, and it is now fucked. Nah, he could still use it. He did after it got quote unquote fucked. There's also another thing I'd like to point out here, and again, this is probably a really wild flung out theory, but it's still within the realms of possibility. Faust is one of the like major like big powerhouses of the Marvel universe. That that thing is known, but he is far from the most powerful. There are worse out there. And I one know of them Galactus and Dormammu. No, no, I'm not even thinking about them. I am thinking of Adam. The character quote introduced at the ends of the Gardens of the Galaxy 2. What if Adam has something to do with bringing down Thanos and sets up the arc for Gardens of the Galaxy 3? At the end of Guardians of the Galaxy 2? One second. Okay, at the end of Guardians of the 2, I can't remember her name, but the golden fucking people that are trying to fuck with the Guardians. Oh, the so Sovereign. Yeah, the, the sovereign. sovereign. Yeah. She, she's a fucking wreck and she has, she, has, she has a special project that'll change things for the better. Oh, what's it called? Adam. And Adam is one of the major powerhouses in the Marvel Universe and, and of course, is more powerful than Thanos, even with Thanos and the Infinity Stones. So... When he can bend reality to make him fall apart. I highly doubt that. Um, welcome to comic, comic books and comic stories. It is entirely possible. Yeah, the cocoon end of Gone Guys 2 was Adam Warlock. That's the last name I couldn't think of. Um, but no, um, yeah, Adam is more powerful than Thanos, even with the stones. That That is a known fact. So, if I can... Yeah, but these are also the movies. So what? It's still... they've, they've been playing by a more realistic set of rules. Excuse me. A more realistic set of rules than the comics. Because it has to be grounded in reality in order for it to be... In, in order for your... um, uh, What is it called? Suspension of disbelief I get... to actually uh, occur. I get where you're coming from, but... You've still got to have a bit like there's still like some fantasy like side to it because if you watch like if you've watched like the how like the Avengers movies have gone and all the Marvel movies have gone you see some of the villains and think oh how they're gonna top that how they're gonna top that if you have no reference for Marvel at all also, you think Loki's the biggest it badass. has already it has already been confirmed mm -hmm. that the next Infinity War movie is gonna be heavily based on time travel. Which makes a lot of sense. Like, again, I'm just throwing out theories there. Like, don't know what could happen, but yeah, time travel or some massive reality manipulation bullshit. And has a to happen. lot of Captain Americas, and potentially a lot of Iron Men. Will potentially a lot of Thors. Uh, and Spider Man. Jesus, Jorick, what Marvel movies would I have to watch so I could watch Infinity War and would make more sense to me? Um, definitely every Avenger movie, like definitely all of them, and I would say from, of, okay. if from the last six years, every or most Marvel movies featuring Iron Man, Captain America, Spider Man, everything basically. <laughs> no, no, well, okay, okay, okay. For the stuff that deals directly with Thanos, you want to see the ones that Infinity Stones. That would be. Captain America, the first one. Yep. Um, Four. Avengers Infinity War. The first Thor didn't have any of them. Um, let's see here. Uh, to, um, uh, the uh, Avengers Age of Ultron. I would say you're going to have to watch all the Captain Americas because references. Um, um, you're definitely going to have to watch Winter Soldier. That's important. No, yes. Civil War covers most. Civil War covers most of that. I would still say yes. Um, yep, gonna have to watch Doctor Strange. Uh, Doctor Strange would definitely be a requirement. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy in. One. Guardians of the Galaxy One. And two. I'm... Civil War. Civil War explains enough. Just watch them all. They're all good films. Civil War explains enough of Spider-Man and explains enough of Winter. 
Um, it also set, sets up for the political climate of um, Infinity War. And in the comic timeline, Civil War and Infinity War happen all at the same time. Uh, let's see here. I would encourage Black Panther, otherwise your African American next door neighbor is going to kill you. Um, uh, let's see here. Black Panther's Little Moonbeam's highly... acting something. What? Let's see here. Uh, like Basically, I said, from what I've remembered. Everything but Deadpool and X Men doesn't include the characters. If you want to get all the background, then yes. Um, X Men and Deadpool is its own like sort of side thing in the Marvel universe. If that makes sense. Well, but, then there are the movies that weren't intended to be uh, preludes to this at all, which, as I said, were the first Thor movies, uh, the, the first the first Thor movie and the first Iron Man movie. They weren't intended to be part of a Marvel Cinematic Universe. They set it up for it. Yeah. But they ultimately weren't part of it. They just they, they just explained the origins of the characters, and even then, a lot of that can be picked up from these movies, and in some cases has changed across them to the point where they're unrecognizable. Yeah, like Tony Stark from Iron Man One and Tony Stark from Avengers: Infinity War, two completely different people. Yeah, but this is what I'm saying is like if you just want a basis just to watch um, Infinity War, then there's a, a a smaller list to watch. But if you want to like follow like the storyline and get all the references, then yeah, pretty much watch like every Marvel movie from like the last like ten years, to be perfectly honest. And I'll 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 say it, the movies worth watching. Like they are decent movies. Like take take a long weekend and just blitz through them. Because <laughs> Jesus Christ, that's something I want to do at some point with my friends. And Toby can confirm this because, yeah, it's something we've talked about several times, and something we'll probably do. Uh, well, I want to do properly after uh, the second part of Infinity War, like because that rise that ties that arc up, like entirely. That's a fair amount of watching to do. But back to this, the the movie itself. Uh, how many would that be? Oh Christ. Uh, all of them. So the, then there's a couple of Hulk films. Uh, there's three, four films. There's there is three... one Hulk film. I thought there was two. No, there's just one. I thought there was there's two the or Incredible something. Hulk, and then there's the Hulk. The Incredible Hulk was the first one that was terrible. The Hulk is just that first Bruce Banner that got immediately replaced, and ultimately is inconsequential because, yeah. Right. Okay, so one Hulk film, three Iron Man films, three Thor films, two Avenger films. Um, I've lost my train of thought already. The Black Panther, one the Spider-Man Homecoming. Uh, what else am I bloody missing? Uh, Doctor Strange. That's quite important. Also, thank you, uh, Ninja Bear, for the hosting. Really appreciate it. Uh, where am I derping? I'm missing something here. Captain America, did you say they that? All, yeah, all the Captain Americas, so that's the original um, Winter Soldier. There, there, what I've typed out is a comprehensive list of everything that involves the stones and a quick catch-up on everything. Yeah, that's a so, short list. Yeah. The, if you... the uh, Captain, Captain America, the first Captain America has the Space Stone, which is known as the Tesseract. It's that blue box thing. Yeah. Um, the first Avengers movie has the Mind Stone, which is in Loki's Scepter. A Guardians of the Galaxy clearly shows the Power Stone. Yes. Uh, Age of Ultron includes more of the Mind Stone because it's actually used to create vision. Yep. Uh, Doctor Strange ultimately features the Time Stone. And Civil War kind of wraps up all of the previous history of all of the different Marvel characters and includes everybody that we could possibly need to feature in there. Except for the fact that Ant-Man is nowhere near... It, I'm sorry, Ant-Man and Hawkeye are nowhere to be seen in um uh like, what's it called infinity war yeah we, we <clears> don't <throat> fully know why but at the end of the day what gerald's posted is the short list to get enough story to understand infinity war but if you want a proper background uh yeah there's 19 movies pretty much or you could just read the wiki so Oh, hang on So, let more about the actual film. Uh, one second, we do have a question from Rayton. Thoughts on Thanos appearing in Fortnite, forced or fun? Forced. Forced. Um, 
Yeah, I'm going to have to go with Forced on that one. It's... <sighs> if it had been something that came out, I would say, in, like, six months' time, uh, once stuff, like, cooled down, I would have said, all right, they've done fun. But to come out this close to the launch of the movie, that was planned and is heavily product placement. So it's trying to get people who watch Infinity War to play Fortnite, and people playing Fortnite are like, oh, who's this guy? And it's like, oh, it's, well, he's from this I mean, movie. Let's look, go watch that. Look at the rest of it. Look at the rest of it. I mean, you have skins that look like Iron Man, that look like fucking John Wick, mm. of all things. Um, it's clear that Fortnite is just they're pandering to all of these different pop culture references. Yeah. And it's doing so in a game format that was made popular by um, uh, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds and is ultimately making it one, kid friendly, and two, just pander mania. That's why I despise Fortnite, but at the same time, I applaud it from a business standpoint. I'm sitting here going, like, I'm not going to enjoy this game. I'm not going to put oh, money yeah. into it, but I understand where you're coming from. It's, like, I... it's just. You know. I don't like but games of that sort of like format and place. I like I really like suck at them. I understand its popularity, I understand where it's coming from. So yeah, yeah, yeah. like kudos to it. But yeah, the amount of like pandering and fan service I've seen in there, it's like how many deals are going on in the boardroom to get these characters likeness to put these like basically advertisements back and forth on? It's insane. To say the very least. Yeah, so, yeah somebody actually, um, somebody actually uh, put up a poster of like comparing the actual Infinity War poster to a Fortnite poster with this with these skins on there, and the I saw it. resemblance is ridiculous. It's so. Cool. Um, but back to opinions on the actual film, because I mm. want to actually get this off my chest. As soon as I okay, right, Pyrocynical put out a video on the film, right. Um, mm. It's part review, part ship posting because that's pyro. Yeah. But the review part of it, I didn't really think about it first because when I watched it initially, I'm like, okay, this is actually like a really cool villain. Thanos is a very interesting villain, yeah. but um, he didn't really catch my eye at first. And then pyro comes out with his review and it's all like, this is not about the Avengers. This is Thanos infinity war. And I'm sitting there going like, oh my god, you're right. This is not a good guy film. This is a villain's film. And it's a villain's film that's done so well. It would yeah. be like if you made a film on Darth Vader, which I still want to fucking see. It would be amazing. But um, it, it, it's just, it comes together so well when you think about it in that way. Do I still like it? No, because it's fucking hopeless at the end. <laughs> but um, but it, it does come up from my original 4 out of 10 rating to something like a 6 out of 10. Yeah. where it still suffers from a lot of superhero movie tropes. Peter Quill is still the biggest fucking idiot in the world. <laughs> the, the movie would have been over without him. The movie would have had a really awesome climax at the end. It would have been an hour shorter without Peter Quill because Peter Quill is a fucking idiot. Yeah. Sorry. But um, in general, in general, um, uh, I, I think the film is better when you put it in that perspective and w when you really think about it it's a better film overall because of that perspective because it deals more with the history of the villain and Josh Brolin puts on a really fucking great performance even though he looks nothing like the teased images that we've seen from previous films oh yeah it's great I mean I'll have to disagree with like it's like better if you see it from that angle I mean I really damn loved it I mean, were the, were the things that could be changed and made better? Yeah. Was Peter a freaking idiot? Well, hell yeah, it was. But this is how like movies like this work. You think the good guys have finally got it. They're going to save the day. And then they just don't, and they lose everything. They suffer from it. And that's all the redemption story, getting everything back, and then fixing everything. That's how these movies work. And I accept that. Like That's perfectly like fine. I, I get that's the way it works. And it was a, a great movie, in my opinion. And well, sit, so let me finish. Sitting back and thinking on it, just the way Thanos explains things. Like when when you hear him at like the start, of, like the movie, you think, "Wow, you're a complete freaking douchebag. You just want to kill half a life in the universe for no apparent reason." But then when he actually explains 
why like when he's on Titan and saying look this is what happened to me this is the, what remains of my planet because this is what happens and it's happening all over the universe yeah I'm I am actually trying to save it and I can get his logic I can understand it it's just very very brutal it's extremism harsh, it's brutal harsh reali- harsh reality logic but he's right if suddenly ha- like half the people on earth just disappeared the amount of resources that can be shared around who's left would be immense. Like, everybody well, would be able to live a bit better, I think. Well, of course it has its flaws. Like, then then you would have to be like, okay, well, who gets the resources if any any of the heirs are completely erased from existence now? Um, who gets this? Who gets that? It's this whole thing of, um, <clears throat> it just tips the balance completely out of favor. And it makes something like... China's basic communist level um, restriction on baby births seem much more humane in the long run. Yeah. To be honest, it is. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, but it's um, like... It, it, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a harsh logic, <laughs> but it's a logic that I can understand. I get why he's doing it. The only thing he isn't taking into account is how who's left reacts to that, basically. Like... He, I mean, he did say there was one planet that is now thriving from it, but I don't think that's out of like thanks or gratitude or anything. I think that's just had to be out of bloody necessity, just to keep the planet running. Because, like I said, the Earth as it is is running for the population it's got. If you suddenly take away half that population, shit's gonna break down. Especially because it's a random half. It's not like oh, this specific person, that specific person. I mean, what if we lose like, you know, all major like leadership? Like, how are we going to resolve that very quickly? We're not. It again, it's an interesting logic, but it has its own flaws. But Thanos has and, his and reasons for believing. The absolute it. chaos happening in New York in the middle of that at the end. Yeah, it's like oh yeah, that that's the thing that happens. Um, well, that's exactly what would happen. Like, it'd be absolutely insane. And we don't even know yeah. what's happened to, like, you know, the rest of the galaxy. You know, what's happened, you know, freaking with the... Oh, I've forgotten their name in Guardians of the Galaxy, the ones that... Um, I've got names. Novacore. Yeah, Novacore. Well, like, what, what's, what the frick's hap- happened there? Well, Novacore has already gotten their shit wrecked because he attacked um, them. Oh, yeah, so they're already... Uh, the, ah, but here's the thing. They've already been halved, but if he's clicked the, his fingers and then caused another, like, half of the rest of the universe to disappear, has Nova Call been hit again? Like, has everywhere he's already touched been touched again? Because well, out of the, the entire the time, universe... The, it, well, hold, hold, hold on a second. In, in terms of the scope of the movie, does that really even matter? Well, not really in the entire scope of it, but it is just... Then your point is invalid, because we're restricted to the scope of what we see on the screen, and we have not seen a single piece of Nova at all. So, unfortunately, I think Nova's fucked. Like, I think it's just gone. I'll be perfectly honest. Uh, No, well, it can't be gone, otherwise they would would have, like, no potential for stuff. And also, Monty's been trying to talk. I do apologize. What is it, Monty? Uh... Since I am coming from the perspective of not knowing anything at all about um, uh, uh, Marvel movies, I took this from a different perspective. Is I took this from uh, Thanos' plan is based on a uh, actually a very old theory called Malthusian theory. Mm-hmm. And what that theory was, it was invented by this economist called Thomas Malthus about 100 years ago. And what he said is he said that we're going to... If people are allowed to procreate, they will. And our population will keep growing and growing and growing and growing until um, we run out of food. But that was disproven pretty much at the start of this century. I'm just trying to bring a bit of reality into this because that's what I like to do. Anyways, so at the start of the 21st century, we start, birthing rates started going down and food production kept going up. So that's not really a threat anymore. Mm. Well, that it it, it, it uh, okay. I think a better explanation would be the Utopia Project. The you know, Utopia, with the mice. Yeah, 
Yeah, I'd say that... it'd be like a combination of Utopia plus Malthusian theory. Because that's under the assumption of, you know, it, it, it can be, it's something that the rats can't see coming. That their carrying yeah. capacity will keep going up because they don't have any natural predators. However, we have cancer, which is why I don't think it should be cured. Uh... I'm sorry, but it, I, I'm sorry, but it does put a massive limit on the human population. It, it's just one of those things where it, it's just like, maybe it shouldn't be. Maybe there isn't one because that's going to limit our carrying capacity um, and so we don't hit like the edge of apocalypse so there, that um, there isn't too big of a, um, a uh, you know population bomb yeah um, I don't have to agree with Liv it's, I mean I get your logic but I wouldn't wish cancer on my worst enemy basically I, I, I wouldn't wish it on I, wish it, I wouldn't wish it on somebody nobody wishes it on each other but it's one of those things where it's like it's a necessary evil for in order for the human race to survive, people mm. do have to die. That's the thing. I get where the you're coming from. Is, just, let's get, let's just get not, away from this because we this is a very, yeah. very dark topic. I do not want to get in there. I, yeah, this, this is not Friday for a cast material. <laughs> this, this this really is not. Speaking of which, we... it's better. Well, it's better than dragging people out to the back street and killing them. Well, yeah. Uh, no, let's just but, let's just end this now. This is it now, because um, the ninja did actually ask a question before we did completely ignore because we were right in the heat of a topic. Uh, anyone seen the trailer for Venom? And if you have, what do you think? Uh, not hopeful. Cautiously optimistic. I'm not hopeful because it, it's Tom Hardy. It's Tom Hardy, but I think he's been dealt a bad a bad hand. Uh. Huh? Yeah. I just need I want I need to see the film for myself in order to really know it because it's a it's a um aspect of Venom that's very rarely explored in the comics but can be a really good story of how it, it's um of how the symbiote is ultimately more in control than the actual person is and struggling with that. Yeah. I I get where you're coming from. It's like hope it's good, but from what I've seen Again, I think Tom's just been dealt a little bit of a bad hand. As long as it's not Spider-Man 3, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> just don't bring Spider-Man into it. Though, Venom was one of Spider-Man's nemesis, so... Nemesis. <sighs> nemesis, whatever. Uh, so, I think... Um, the current Spider-Man... You know, that's going to be... Tom his, Holland. Yeah, that's going to be is rival basically venom is going to be the new rival this is the introduction okay to venom. tom hardy being the shit out of tom holland that just sounds funny oh when you say it like that, that sounds <laughs> fucking hilarious i i will pay money i will pay okay. good money to see that shit i I'll love tom that. holland i love him tom holland as an actor he's great he's awesome he is this he is basically the reincarnation of Anton Yelchin, um, which I am so happy for. But I really do want to see that because just seeing a poor kid get beaten the piss <laughs> out of by by the by what people are assuming is going to be the next James Bond. Yeah. Oh yeah, work. You're also right. He did play Shinzon in Star Trek Nemesis. He was also um, he was also in um, Mad Max. As yep. Mad Max. Yeah, he was. And he was Bane. So Tom Arnie gets around. <laughs> uh, Lilith, speaking of uh, bad hands, you guys seen the leaked images of Teen Titans movie? I oh, haven't. Oh, God. But I've heard some whispers that, oh, dear God, is the basic response oh, to that. Oh, God. That's a yeah. thing. Oh, God. Wait, no, 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 no. Oh, no. It's not the Teen Titans Go thing. I want to see this. Uh, oh, it's... is it actually oh, like the good one, not the shitty mm. remake? <laughs> um, Let me see this. I really hope this is not just a... I'm, I'm watching this one. Gerald. Talk to us, buddy. I'm trying to figure out if it's a fan trip or not. Epic trailer. The possible Teen Titans. Dot dot huh. dot. 
This video was made purely for fun. You <laughs> <laughs> So while Gerald recovers from looking at that, um No quick, um Quick slide into uh like uh, game like gaming news. Uh game people have been waiting for for so fucking long. Uh Red Dead Redemption uh finally got its bloody release date. Like, Finally! It, Wasn't that supposed to be released like two months ago? Yes, but its release date has now been announced at October 26th, 2018. At long Holy goddamn crap. last. That's like half a year pushback. Oh, oh, uh, one second. So... I mean, there's a Teen Titans Go movie that's... I'm sorry, I'm, I I'm still need to find answers for this. There is a Teen Titans Go to the movies thing that's coming out, and that looks retarded because of Teen Titans Go. Uh, um, but I keep on seeing like a few Teen Titans movie trailers, but one of them looks legit and the other one's clearly fan made. It's just I I don't know what I'm looking at. Ah, Jesus Christ! Also, it's taking me a minute. So. in terms of release dates, there is a game I really want to know the release date for, but I don't know yet. What game is it? I want to know the release date for Metro Exodus. I don't know when. I know it's coming this year, but I don't know when. Hmm. Because I love every single Metro game, and I really can't wait for this one to come out. Uh, what's it called again, sorry? Metro Exodus. Metro Exodus. Metro Exodus. Really quickly for... Yeah, it's still the same 2018. Actually, you just remind me. Uh, there is another game coming out that I am definitely, definitely interested uh, to look up. I don't know if it's got a release date yet. Um, so there's like a roleplay game, like a tabletop roleplay game, called mm -hmm. Mutant Year Zero, and the premise is uh, it's post-apocalyptic. It's v in r relatively speaking terms, it's very soon after. Everything's cleared, like the dust settling, that sort of crap, and you're a part of like only a couple of hundred people surviving. The problem is the everybody's got mutations because of all the radiation. Nobody really lives past the age of like <clears throat> thirty, um, except someone called the Ancient who is running the place, and but he's dying basically. Like the leader is dying because he's that damn old, so the mutants, you have to venture out into the wasteland finally to try and survive. That's the main premise of the game, but it's basically expect to die because after every gaming session, people from your camp just die of natural causes. Because it's that insane. And there's now a video game coming out that's in the style of XCOM. Oh. Like, like the turn-based, like no strategy to shoot them but your your characters are going to be these mutants so each of them are going to have a different trait that will uh you know be like a benefit to them in some way so for example the character i've got gen for the tabletop game is i'm basically a human plant it sounds daft but it means my body is covered in deadly fawns for close combat and i've got bark skin for extra defense so we might see stuff like that in this game. And if it's the style of XCOM, you better damn right I'm going to throw money down on that. I love XCOM. I love that also, style of game. So do I. Also, I saw a trailer for this game that's coming out sometime, like the end of this year, called We Happy Few. We ha Why oh, that yeah, that's right. That okay, we, really we, happy few, we Happy Few is the one where it's like that society that's always on drugs so they don't feel bad at all. Seriously, oh. that reminded me to fuck of 1984. Mm. It looked like 1984. The Orwell book? Yes, the Orwell book. Hmm. It's an overruling, overbearing government on British people in the second half of the 20th century. Fair enough. Might have to give that a bit of a look. It looked really cool. I, I thought it was kind of stupid when I saw the style of it, but I'm like, that's actually a pretty cool story. But anyways, um, isn't it about time, Kabuli? I was just about I... to say we 
have come over. I though. am going to say this, Kiv. Shy is not streaming today. We can I, keep going. Yeah, but it's also we've been going two hours and I'm starting to get really tired. I got somewhere to be, so... Exactly. <laughs> well, so... can I steal your viewers then? Uh, Sure, what are you planning on doing? I'm going to be playing Splinter Cell Conviction because I still need to record more footage for my review of it. All right, okay. okay. You go bugger off, get started in streaming. I'll keep people entertained for five more minutes, and then I'll raid your dumb ass. Okay. Could, we'll, uh, <laughs> could we do, like, pause for a second? I need to talk to you, Kavili. Uh, Wait till I've, I've raided Jero and ended the stream properly, then I can have a word of your money. Alrighty. I don't have time. Uh, I can't really pause it if I'm going to raid. Uh, you can now. I already have the stream up. You already have the stream up? Okay, then. Folks, yeah, it took uh, me three clicks. Fair enough. So, again, thank you very much, everybody, for showing up this week. I highly appreciate it. Hope you have enjoyed us losing our minds, practically. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'm just going to just type in raid on gyroscope right now. There we go. Two raiders. Four raiders. It's all going on. Yes! Join me! Join us! Join us! But yeah, thank you very much for joining the Friday Furcast, the ninth one. Uh, should be around next week for more mayhem and hopefully don't die of laughter. But it has been fun and I will leave you in the cable hands of Gerald and see you next time. Take care and goodbye everybody.